my hero academia Hello and welcome to the 116th episode of the My Hero Academia podcast. I'm Kendra and today with me we have Sophie. Hello, it's nice to be back after a while. Okay, and James. Hello, I'm always here. (laughs) And we're happy (laughs) to have you. Uh, And today we're going to be talking about uh, a bit of news, chapter 280, and then we do have an email to answer as well, which is kind of fun. But first, let's jump into that news. Okay, so I have two bits of news. So the first bit is that uh, My Hero Academia is getting one new original anime episode that will be out um, on August the 16th of this year. So just six days away, and it's going to be um, taking a look at the... Oh, it's going to be a new episode that took place right before the provisional Pro Hero License exam. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like it's shrouded in mystery at this point, but that's mm-hmm. some exciting news. Um, the second bit of news is that we're finally getting a very good All Might figurine from what it looks like. It's made by First Four Figures um, and it's going to be All Might in his Silver Age attire. I'm not sure the date when it's coming out, though. That's not been released. Um, but if you go on the First Four Figures website or the Twitter, you can see it. And it looks pretty good. He's very sculpted. <laughs> it is nice that they actually do like the kind of more of the manga like shading on him which we didn't get on some of the other figures yeah even the detail in his hair is like it doesn't look like his like his whole head is smooth like they put ridges in to his hair where it's pulled back and up Mm. uh his like hair bang things stress me out because the where they break like i have a funko pop that like he lost one of his hair antennae oh no so I'm like, live all night. I literally hot glued it back on and it fell off again. So Aww. he's a unicorn now. Uh, but James, there was some news of some book coming out. Yes, there is a official Animation Works book for season four that has animation cells, character designs, and the website just says, and more. <laughs> <laughs> but that should come out. It says somewhere between autumn and winter of 2020. They also released a season one animation art book that has that covers episodes one through 13 and 14, 14 through 20 something. I forgot. 26, I think. And that should be out later this month, actually. Nice. And there is also some charity stuff going on. There was a charity video that was like a performance of You Say Run. All the proceeds go to UNICEF. You can buy uh, vinyl releases of it as well. And it has, like, Christopher Sabat in it. And it it's, like, kind of instrumental slash singing. Like, it's, it's actually really cool. I would recommend checking out. We've retweeted it earlier. But maybe I'll, we'll give it another reblog or maybe attach it to the tweet thread. But it's really worth checking out. I was, I was considering buying the vinyl, even though, like, I don't have a record player. And just be like, I could, like, decorate my wall with it or something. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you could pin it to the wall or buy those uh, special vinyl frames. Mm -hmm. I can frame it, but... Mm -hmm. But it includes 22 members of the original English dub cast, and also the composer, Yuki Hayashi himself. Like, he's, like, playing... I think he's playing the piano, I forget, or guitar, I forget which, but it's very, very cool, highly recommend. And on... I guess Charity's happy note. On a happy, happier note, we have an author's comment as well from Horikoshi. Or I guess it's a little sad. A mechanical pencil uh, he's been using for over 10 years is on its last leg. He's sad because they no longer make these, so we need to send Horikoshi mechanical pencils. This is this is why you buy a huge stockpile of pens and pencils when you have the chance. <laughs> uh, I would have bought a re- bunch of extras. What's can up? You re- can you reload mechanical pencils? Yes, you can, but assuming he's used it for 10 years, maybe the mechanics of it is all uh, stuff or something. I but usually when I find it, really long. usually when I find a really good pen I like or a pencil, I like buy a bunch of those. Like I literally have like a hundred of the same pen in one of my bins just so I never have to run out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Was that the sound of you checking? The, the, yeah, I was the... just checking to see the see if they're still there. <laughs> Did the pens escape? <laughs> What is a mechanical pencil? It's uh, a weird pencil. Um, it's, it's a pencil that you load little pieces of lead in, and then you can, like, press down on the eraser button, 
and a little a little bit of the pencil will come out. You know, whenever your pencil breaks, you just press the button again, a little bit more of the pencil lead comes out. That's probably the best way I can explain it. It's basically a pencil you don't have to sharpen. And so it's kind of like a pen, but it's erasable. I don't like them because, like, they can break as well, which is sometimes annoying. Okay, so this is My Hero Academia, Chapter 280. And we start off with the smouldering forest. We can hear the student saying, hang on, everyone hanging in there. The fire's spreading so fast. That guy didn't hold anything back. And it's, that's some, the way that he's shaded it, that's... The way that he's done that, uh, the fire, it looks really scary, especially with the crackle, crackle sound effects. Mm. And then we see Kaminari lying on Poltergeist's uh, lap. And she's saying, Kaminari, I'm so sorry. Are you OK? I mean, you're not, but still. <laughs> and Kaminari's just saying, lap, pillow. <laughs> so <laughs> so he's, not, uh, he's not completely out of it. Uh, we go over to Ciro. And he's saying we were literally blown away before the fire could trap us, but some of them are still in there. And we get a dramatic pan to the fire forests. And then we go over to Mina, and she's jumping in her acid right towards Gigantomachia's mouth. And we see acid man. No fire is touching me through this sticky armor. I can push forward, and since I can, that means I've got a fear keeping me in place. Midnight is still alive, right? And we can see as she's jumping towards him, Mount Lady is really struggling to hold his uh, his mouth open. And Mina's acid starts to come off, and she's saying, I've got to melt it away. Nap time. And we go over to Gigan to Matthew saying, This is the shortest route to master. Stopping to deal with gnats is too much of a detour. Made the wrong choice. Shortest route means keeping gnats from getting up again. And as he starts to like think and say this, he looks up at Mount Lady, who's trying to like pull his mouth apart, and it's terrifying when he gives her that evil side glare. Yeah, that gave me chills. Like I didn't even really notice it the first time, and I'm just like, oh, he's actually like looking at her. Yeah, and his side back glare is for Mount Lady, but it's so like. It scares uh, Mina as well, and then she remembers when she was, like, in her... Hmm, what is it for America and Japan? We just have primary and secondary school. Middle school? Or, like, middle school, high school? Yeah, when she was in, um, I guess it was middle school, and she saw Gigantomachia standing over her school chums. And she remembers, and she is terrified. And then on the next page, I really like this. We see her um, as she like remembers her fear then. And she's gone from jumping through the air in her hero costume to jumping back into her like schoolgirl costume, I guess, to show that she feels the same way that she felt back then. Mm-hmm. And she's so scared that she like fumbles and lets go of the um, the canister of sedatives. And just as she does that, Gigantomachia falls through the ground and takes Mount Lady with him by her head. Ooh. Yeah, he's li- he's literally hold like because his other hand is going into the ground and he's holding onto her by her head. And then on the next panel, he flings her over again by her head. If she doesn't have some like neck and back damage, I'll be very impressed. Um, he falls down, then he gets right back up just in time for his hand to go over Mina and appear that he's going to flatten her. And then, ooh, I love I love the shading of that hand as it's about to grab her. It feels very much like all for one or some one for all. And Kirishima rushes in <laughs> and he pushes her out of the way and he takes the hit instead. And uh, I don't know, even his hair looks spikier. Mm-hmm. And everyone's surprised. I can't tell if he... Oh, I think he also... He does take the hit. Because there's a panel of, like, stuff like rubble, earth. And then a yeah, further the, away shot. Like, someone... Oh, Mountain Lady gets landing, basically. Yeah, yeah I wasn't sure either. Uh, but after that, we see Mountain Lady, like, out cold. She's done. Uh, and Tetsu, 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 Tetsu has come over and he's saying... <laughs> Time to move. <laughs> Can you stand? 
a mud man sink in the flames to put him out. And she says, but Tetsu, Tetsu! Uh, she, she forgot some. <laughs> Kirishima, he... Uh, and uh, Tetsu, 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 Tetsu is thinking, ah, that punk, unlike me, he doesn't burn, but it pr- it's probably still hot for him. And he's thinking, he was faster than me, and he dove right into that hell. And that's like, it is an interesting question of, does his hardening have a different melting point than steel we don't really know but it's it's i don't know i love that it's coming back up and uh giganto machia just like palms his back and he's like oh there you guys are (laughs) um oh that's right that's a hero getting pushed down i think yeah because i was like who i was like who is this i don't remember this villain (laughs) one of the villains just doesn't make it just because he couldn't get on his hand fast enough (laughs) uh and he says the nets are down. Hold on tight, comrades. <laughs> uh, sorry, it just makes me think of all those like communism memes. Or not yeah, memes. I wouldn't expect him to use the word comrades. Maybe mm-hmm. he's from Russia. <laughs> I guess it might be that since they're like one for all told him to like take care of them. So it's kind of like you guys are my comrades to him. Yeah. He actually has a Russian accent, and we just never, we didn't realize. We should have known. Is it just me, or does he look a little bit sexy in that yes! above panel? <laughs> Thank you, I'm not the only one! <laughs> Where I was like, it looks very, like, noble or something there. I don't know how to describe it. I think they were literally in, like, the small of his back. But yeah, sexy, giganto macho. We give us the calendar when. Uh, but someone is climbing him. Bl- like digging in. I can't tell if it's like Adamachi bleeding or uh, Kirishima bleeding. But he's like, I am Red Riot! And no one behind me is gonna bleed! And he's still climbing. Oh! Who's behind him? Oh, no, sorry, that's his claws. That's his claws. I thought Dark Shadow was there for a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh,. But they're all very impressed. But Giganto Matcha is like, Nat, I don't care. <laughs> you got a Nat 20! <laughs> oh my gosh. But move on to the next panel. And we see that Kirishin was going to uh, chunk uh, the sedative. And you see a shatter as you see a knife blade go through. And we see that it was, um, oh my gosh. Yeah. What? How did I forget her name? Oh my gosh. Um, Toga. Toga, thank you. My goodness. And Kirishima was like, that was my dose. Says, Ashido, your chivalrous spirit, as he grabs another bottle from his pocket, is in good hands as he throws the uh, sedative into Gigantomachi's mouth. And we hear a nice crunch, which means he took the sedative. And we see his arm reaching out. And we get a boom, boom, pow. <laughs> And we see Lizard Tail Cut and carrying Kirishima away. As we Woo! see the uh, Yeah. <laughs> she has Buggy's powers. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but we see that the students below are shooting like these big old mortars at uh Giganto Machia. This is uh Ojiro saying, Red Riot successfully administered dose to Kirishima. No. Wait, that's not Ojiro, it's Shoji. <laughs> My goodness, I am and doing that And also Red Rock. I said Red Riot. Administered a dose to Kirishima. Oh my gosh, yeah, Red Riot <laughs> successfully administered a dose. Kirishima really did it. I can't read today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Doesn't Shoji's, like, eye, like <laughs> arm eyes look so weird? They're like, so I know big. their eyes. Yeah, they're so big. He's got big eyes. <gasps> I thought they had to be like it's his eyes still, but I guess he's just like. Boo-hoo. And then uh, what is his name? Apaka Beast. He looks like he has like All Might's like skinny hair. Mm-hmm. He has like All Might's face, like whenever All Might's yeah. like, skinny, he looks weird. What's he doing? He's just like picking up a tree. I think he's moving the trees out of the way. Oh. So also, how fire. Is, Loma was like not standing after she like used all of like. Yeah, I'm she just sure used three big anti-tank weapons, essentially. Yeah. I 
I know that, like, I've been in the past, I've been, like, complaining that she just makes cannons, but yeah. she's levelled up her cannons, so I have no complaints here. Mm-hmm. If she keeps making cannons, but they just, like, end up getting bigger and bigger, and then in the end she's <laughs> made some, like, huge Navy war vessel. Oh, I my mean, God. I don't mind. <laughs> That's what it's leading up to, mm. I swear. But we do see uh, Momo, and she's shielding Jiro and... Uh, Oh my gosh, Invisible Girl. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought she was wearing rain gear for a second, but it's like yeah. five and stuff. Yeah, but she's covering Jiro and company. And she says, the more he moves around, the faster the drug should work, Majestic. And this is where we get to see Majestic. And Majestic saying, understood. I had high hopes for you, Momo, and you didn't disappoint. Come on, everyone. Those trainees have done more than enough for the day. As I see the other heroes being, I guess, being carried by... Uh, by his powers. Sorry, I just saw Gang Orca and it made me happy. Yeah, Gang Orca's there, Fat Gum is there, Amajiki's there, mm-hmm. and others. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, this is interesting. Like, sorry, there's uh-huh. a dude who looks who has like the hat of that school. Yeah, I don't remember his name, but I think that's that that's that kid. Oh yeah, he's there. Uh, meat meat is well, meat meat. What if he turns like a into a giant meatball? Mm. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Meatballs I don't think is it's definitely him. not there. No. No. The other guy. No way. I, I think some heroes just like kind of keep that uniform or like that style sometimes. I mean, we we can't really see the hat properly. Like it mm. it might not be one of the students. It's it's just a hat. I just want I, I just want to see a giant meatball. But sorry, <laughs> keep going. Yes, and then this is interesting too because it looks like he puts a shield on over his eyes. Oh, this is yeah. so many gnats. And it looks like he's got like a visor. <laughs> and then we cut to the scene at the hospital. It's over. Tomura Shigaraki, as we see Endeavor <laughs> standing over Shigaraki. I read the chapter and I still had a moment where I was like, fuck it, Shigaraki talking and he killed them all. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yes, and we see a very battered Endeavor here. He said, gather up all the power you like. But without ideals, your hollow destruction will never bring us down. As we see a very battered uh, Shigaraki. Huff, you heroes hurt your own families just to help complete strangers. Dad told me that. He says, you want ideals? I have it. No, I had it. And that was that's the end of the chapter. Ooh. Uh, I don't want to go back to this. This is stressful. <laughs> But it looks uh, like Endeavor's doing a good job so far. Uh, but Sophie, what are your thoughts on the chapter? And maybe my, a bit on the arc, because we haven't heard from you in a little bit. Or yeah. we had him on a few chapters ago. My thoughts at the end of this chapter were you, James, where you said it doesn't look good for Shigaraki. No, don't fall into that Horikoshi lies. <laughs> <laughs> he, always, he always makes it seem like it's going to go know. one way, and then he's like, Surprise! I did exactly what I did every time, and you always buy it. (laughs) I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you. (laughs) That's what he's thinking. I my favorite bit was that like last week I thought, oh, like Mina, she's jumping in her acid. That's really cool, and I like that she didn't succeed. I mean, they succeeded, but I like that she didn't succeed, and like she, well, she, she did, but only like with help. And I like that because if she was just going to like jump in with her acid and Moa was going to create some cannons and then they would take Gigantomachia down, it wouldn't be realistic. Mm. Um, and they still might not have taken him down with the sedative. But um, I like the like the added steps that Horikoshi added in there. I think that was really cool. Mm. Um, I really like all the scenes of Mina jumping through the air. And I like that he where he changed her into her school uniform as she was like feeling nervous and scared like she was for. I thought that was so clever. Um Yeah, it was just really great. And even if we only see other students like um my number one lizard tail cut, even if we only see them in like small panels, I'm just happy that we're seeing them. Um I was like on Page 19 with Gigantomachia's jaw. I still don't know what's going on there. Is he like, does he move up bits of his chin? 
to protect his That's what it looks face. like, actually, or yeah. Earth, or it's Earth. Like, he's actually, maybe he's not actually as big as we think he is, and he's actually just, like, adding Earth to himself, or he's, like, uh, cur- yeah, I don't know. It looks like his chin, actually, because if you go a couple pages back, you see that he has full-on chin, and then the next one is just, like, smaller butt chin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His lower jaw looks freakishly, like, it just looks like bone when that, like, armor faceplate thing is up. Yeah. He, mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, that was cool. It's good to see his loyalties more. Yeah, it was a really good chapter. Um, I like in the at the end, we've gone back to Shigaraki, because as much as I like seeing the other students, when we flip back and forth like this, I like to go back every now, like every few chapters like Horikoshi does. Otherwise, in the back of my mind, it's like, oh, wait, it, it starts to pull a little bit. I'm like, but what about them? What about them? So it's nice to go back and see Shigaraki for a bit as well. But yeah, really enjoyed this chapter. Nice. Uh, I really liked it as well. Like, oh, I had a legit moment where I thought Ashido was going to die. Like, I was reading it and I was like, oh, my God, like, I, I can't re- I can't look at the next page. Like, I, I, I can't do this. <laughs> I almost do wish that it had worked just with her because it would have been nice to have, like, her have a really cool moment. But I think it, it is really fitting that it's her and Kirishima because they both mm-hmm. like and Kirishima finally actually he couldn't do anything back then. But now he could. Now he can. Like he's actually being the hero he wanted to be. And also that Ashido isn't fearless. That like last chapter she's like, oh, of course she's fine. And now we see that like she is worried as well. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciate that as well. Cause you're like, always whenever she's in the air, she always looks so carefree. So it is like especially sad, like interesting to see it like terrified as like she's in her school uniform, kind of like back in that moment. Um, the brutality with Mountain Lady is, like, really cool. I appreciate that's not, like, being, like, it's scary, and I wish it wasn't happening, but it's, like, it makes it feel very real. Um, I love Kirishima. I'm so glad he's getting a really cool moment, and that, like, I also I appreciate, like, the, he's, he's saying that uh, Ashido has chivalrous spirit, even though she's, like, a girl, like, she can still have that. I don't know. Um, the League is just funny that they're just like barely even in it. I, I oh I do love when Toga throws the knife. It like oh I I thought it like kind of splits the panel a little bit. I just thought that was uh, really yeah. cool. Um and I can I my theory is that Gigantomachia can maybe make bone or or like I don't think he's I think him, him getting big is like him i think if you break him he'll like lose those bits or something like he's actually a lot smaller or mm-hmm. something but i don't know uh go momo's cannons go she needs to eat a big meal um i do like the the endeavor calling him like hollow kind of makes me think of U- usj when the all night was like he's just a kid and like kind of just has like em- like he's kind of like empty but I, I, I also really love kind of the flashback actually coming into play and like you heroes hurt your own families. Yeah, I endeavor. <laughs> so like, I wonder how much of that is going to come up or like, is Togoroki going to come in there? And like, I, I don't, I wonder like what ideals or what like Shigaraki is going to go on about. He scares me. I don't want him to kill everyone. I just want to go back to the students. Sorry, James. What are your, what are your thoughts? I do want to go back to the students too. I kind of mm. hope it, would stick around that, but it doesn't seem like it. Uh, very Mina and Kirishima heavy. I really like this chapter because of that. Mm. Really good art. I mean, right where Kirishima comes in, it's just wow. Mm. And I did like the fake out where we thought that the dose was gone, and then he pulls out of his pocket Mina's dose and throws it in there. That was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know much about Giganto Machia. Maybe he can just... I don't know if he accumulates earth or something to make him so big, but he looks like he can break himself apart to shield other parts of his body. So that's interesting as well. I like that Momo protected uh, Hagakuri and uh, Jiro with the thermal blanket. They're in the middle of that fire. I just yeah. realized that. That's so terrifying. It's, that's scary, honestly. Uh, I mean, other than that, I really just enjoyed this chapter. It was really, really good. 
Uh, I would say I don't like how Horikoshi draws fire. It just looks like rain. Like it, I, I think it's kind of hard to tell it's fire. But that's oh, I me. really like that's it. That's a weird effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And which which page specifically are you talking about? Um, I would say on page 18, I don't like the fire. It just looks like wind. Excuse me. If you think <laughs> that's rain, you don't know rain. <laughs> uh, I need to move to Britain. I can see why you... I can see why you why like people wouldn't like it. It's an individual choice. I I personally like it. I think my favourite like fire shot was right at the start of the chapter when they're in the woods and even the woods is dark and the way he's like highlighted the mm-hmm. fire but still made it dark. But for me, it's hard. That, that first panel, it's hard for me to tell it's fire. Yeah, I thought it was wind the first time around. But too. I do like some of the later, there's some later fight. Like, the art in this is incredible. I am i don't mean to bash Horikoshi at all. And I think it's, I think maybe it's cool that he is doing more of a unique fire. I like maybe the one when Jagatomachi is standing up and there's the fire underneath him. And also, oh no, sorry, Kirishima and Tetsu 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 running through. I like that fire. I don't know. Fire. Fire is hard to draw. Gigantomachia's jaw might be one of my favourite things <laughs> that he's drawn throughout the chapter. Like, even his teeth, they're just, like, they're so chiselled and grisly. I know he put a lot of effort into that uh, six-pack on page 13, but the whole way through, I, I just really like his big, clumpy jaw and those uh, sabre teeth made from stone. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's really cool that, like, yeah, there's so like there, there's always something new that Machia has. Because he has so many corks in him. Mm-hmm. That it's just like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> oh, so, he's dismantling his jaw. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, I don't know. I, I Are they just going to, like, I don't know. I, I just wanted to fall down and be like, hey, listen, What if he's, like, a transformer and goes into, like, defense mode or something and he looks like a tank? <laughs> to a rock he's just like no <laughs> you know what if we're talking about art have a look on page 18 mm-hmm. look at like kirishima's feet which i think could oh, quite yeah. drawn quite well <laughs> and then look at um beast's weird fingers i know, I know. beast is from like a long distance away but mm-hmm. I like the difference in art from Kirishima's feet to those like weird fingers. Yeah, so he looks like all my in his normal form with that mm-hmm. face. It's just <laughs> he had to draw a lot of text. He's like, screw it. There, I need to put something here. He's a beast fan. Uh, and now, I, like, yeah. big you could, eyes. I was gonna say you could see Mushroom Girl in the very back behind uh, Vanta oh, Black. Too. That's cool. Uh, I, look, I like Mineta behind the tank just glaring. <laughs> <laughs> he mad! He's so mad! Uh, I appreciate that Kirishima, like, he lost his shoes. Like, he went... I think he didn't <laughs> even have them... Why don't you have shoes? I guess maybe they burned off. He bur- They burnt off. I, I was like, where did they go? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, his feet might also tear them apart in his... Red Riot form. Because Tetsu Tetsu has his shoes. Oh, oh yeah. no, he needed to kick his feet off. He used his feet to climb up um, Giganto Machi, didn't he? You know, like when people ice climb and they've got <gasps> picks in their hands and those like pick things on their feet. I think he used his feet to climb up Giganto Machi. Oh, I think so you're right. Like, yeah. Because I'm trying to look through. <laughs> you try looking for feet pictures. <laughs> <laughs> you need an IMDB page to be on the feet wiki, so Kirishima needs an IMDB page so he can post pictures of his feet. Do not post pictures of his feet. Do not nice things. Actually, he starts off barefoot, because right yeah. when he rescues Mina, you can see his bare feet. Yeah, in, in um, like 10 to 11. He's really flaring those toes. Oh, I thought that was a hand! That's why I was trying to find his feet, and I didn't see it. Yeah. You know what? We might have spoken about Kirishima's feet a little bit too long. <laughs> yes, it might be time to move on. But overall, really good chapter. I it's it, maybe experimenting with kind of like different effects as well is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm glad the heroes are stepping in again. And that was cause like the students got to shine. Now the pros are here. Can they please do something? And are I like I don't know the Sugar Rocky fight just worries me because I'm like. He has so many powers that I'm just like, well, I, I don't know. He's overpowered. But that, that's yeah, the he's, point. 
he's definitely not down and out. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you got to remember, he's also not at 100 percent either. Yeah. He's at 76 percent, I think. Mm-hmm. And that shot of Endeavor is really good with his like gritting his teeth and he's like, Argh. it's a really yeah. good shot. I think he's burned himself too because like, doesn't he overheat? Yeah. As well? Maybe. He does overheat. I'm just trying to look at his face being like, are those burns or is he just like bloodied? I can't tell. Tune in next time. Uh, but uh, do we want to look at, or any other thoughts before we jump to an email? Let's go to the email. Uh, this is from Black Northwind. They said this is from last week because sorry we missed it. Uh, saying hello, MHA Pod. I just want to say that Mr. Compress's quirk is the is quirk one ha- is the quirk I'd want to have because when because tw- like I could transport my bike and other stuff with ease. But I wonder as to why we don't get details of this quirk. Does Horikoshi want it to be similar to how magicians don't reveal their details behind their magic tricks. Oh, so he's saying he's kind of like uh, kind of like a magician who doesn't reveal his tricks. So like we don't know his quirk just because that's the magic of it. <laughs> Didn't we get a quirk explanation though? Not really. I don't think it has a name. All we know is that yeah. like you No, I was saying we got like a small explanation. That's why I was like we didn't get a real like details about his quirk so i was just like never mind i guess like we know he capsules stuff and he can release it and now he has his hands so he can like launch them but he only has so many i guess we don't know if there's a limit to how many like spheres he can have or if there's a weight limit because he can capture like fire it's not just like i guess fire is a physical thing i don't know i think it will be revealed when we know more about mr compress because we've not really seen him like, he'll throw his little spears in every now and then, but he, we've not seen him in a big fight. He's not had much dialogue. I feel like when we get some background information on him, then we'll find out more. Like, when we got some more background information on Spinner is when we, like, got his quirk and things. Because before, we mm-hmm. everyone was like, what is it? What is it? So I think Horikoshi's just, like, taking his time. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's interesting because of, like, their society that he couldn't, like, use it to carry his bike because they would be using his quirk and you basically, I guess it would be hard hard for people to know he was using it. I think it's mainly just like a, yeah, I wonder if he would get in trouble if you, like, capsuled your bike so no one could steal it. And then if, like, a cop saw you, like, uncapsule your bike and be like, you're using your quirk in public without a license. Yeah, that's why you just hide it. Yeah. <laughs> just do things illegally so no one finds out and you're golden. Uh, and maybe that's why he turned bad because he was a magician and then they realized he was using his quirk as a magician so he was breaking the rules or something. He's a fake magician. I cracked the case. Oh, but I guess maybe are there quirks that you'd want that are just practical quirks? Like if you could use them and you were able to use them in day-to-day life without like the quirk police saying something. I think everyone would like a transportation quirk. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I would take my joke one of teleporting to the subway and do it for real. See, I would just do teleporting short distances. That way mm-hmm. I could just burp, jump anywhere. Like maybe like a mile or something, like a small mm-hmm. range. I don't know what um the the cook, the chef hero, what his quirk is. But I would love that. Like when you're tired and you've got to cook dinner, oh, it'd be so much better if you had a quirk that just made that quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess it's just cool that he's using what like you wouldn't think as like an attack quirk, just like storing stuff as like really offensively, like capturing people, like capturing rubble and like throwing it at people. It's yeah. a cool, cool ways to use a quirk, basically. Uh, what's his real name? Let me see his face. He's cute. 
<laughs> oh, Kendra. <laughs> He's cute! That anime episode when uh, they were fighting uh, bleh, Overhaul, and he like had his mat. You just saw his mask, like his like ski mask, and I was like, hey, I like it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, was Mr. Compress on my list of crushes for the Valentine's Day episode? I can't remember. Mm, I no. think that episode came out after that, and you were like, oh my god, he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I used to have a note on my computer of my crushes, but I think I deleted it, because I was like, why do I have this? But <laughs> I should have kept it. It's important information. This is my hero Okay, so we're going to play the Gary game, which has been a little bit of a while since we played it. Um, so the Gary game is where we take two characters from random from the My Hero Wiki page, and we uh, we have a light-hearted, light-hearted debate over what the uh, the most interesting or weirdest, funniest, deadliest, whatever uh, mashup of their two quirks could be. So the first character is. Hiruju Rin. So if I'm not mistaken, that is Scales. Oh, that's like the guy who looks like the Chinese vampire? Yeah, so he... Dragon Shroud is his name. Yes, exactly. uh, Scales is his quirk. He's the um, Chinese exchange student. Mm, Okay. Oh, he actually is Chinese? Yeah. Oh, Birthplace, China. Hmm. And the second character is... Oh, so it's... Um, Yu Yu Haya. So that is um, Nedri's best friend. I don't think we have a quirk for her. <laughs> no, Wasn't we don't. that a ghost quirk? Oh, no, that's... Sorry, that was someone else. Yeah. That was Kendo's oh, friend. Yeah. Okay, so the next character is... Okay, she also doesn't have a quirk. But <laughs> Centipede. We've had oh. Centipede before. He's a popular option. Centipede. So it's, oh, these are quirks that go very well together. Mm-hmm. Scales and uh, Centipede. So he's, he, we don't know, really know a huge amount about his quirk, but it gives him like long centipede limbs and he can use them to attack or restrain enemies from afar but i'm sure he's like i feel like he must have some different abilities as well but those are the ones that we know of at the moment that he uses his centipede arms to restrain people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh scale uh curio's quirk allows him to sprout strong durable reptilian scales from his skin protects him like armor and he can also shoot the scales mm. i'd like it if they like their quirks molded together where they could sh- sprout the scales but the scales like sort of um something like vines erupted from them like nets mm. so then they were like they were capturing but also offensive mm. <laughs> or if you could like sprout centipedes or something or like, oh my god, that's so horrible. <laughs> just terrifying. Or like having just turning only part of his body into like the centipede kind of like curling up protection thing. You made centipedes me, curl up, yeah. When you said sprouting centipedes, you made me think <laughs> of, you know, Shino. Mm. I think it's Shino, isn't it, from um, Naruto. And he keeps bugs in his oh, skin. Oh, Shinzo. Shinso that yeah, and then he um he like releases them from his skin, and there's one episode where they're coming out of his eyes. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, I was thinking of the Spider-Man comic where he like legit pretends that his power is to summon or create spiders, and people are like, nope, I'm not dealing with this, and just like. Oh. <laughs> That just sounds like an amazing power, just because, like, nobody wants to deal with spiders. <laughs> yeah, centipedes are even worse, so, like, just some of it, but, like, I could just, like... We have... Yeah. I think I've mentioned this before, but we have, like, the giant desert centipede out here. 
Ugh. And they're really gross. They're like over a foot long, and they got these big old legs. Ugh. <laughs> Just turn your arms into centipedes, and it has like the mouth of centipedes. So you're like, Ugh! it's like a scary <laughs> weedy arm man, but <about> centipede. <laughs> <laughs> There would be no cry. But James, how would you combine these quirks? I don't know. I'm scared now. I can't think <laughs> straight. Uh, that's kind of hard. Just because, like, I really do like the idea that he just, instead of scales, he sprouts centipedes and just throws them at people. <laughs> that would legit terrify me. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. Uh, maybe a very scaly centipede that has, like, extra armor. <gasps> like a dinosaur. Yes. Ooh, a dinosaur bug. That would be cool. Yep. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> Ooh, I think I maybe took your idea and made it dinosaur scales. <laughs> but I really like that idea. That is terrifying. <gasps> but imagine if they were like, um, is it the Stegosaurus that looks really scary and it's got those, all those big scales sticking out of its back? Yeah, that's the Stegosaurus, I think. Yeah, imagine if you, they looked really t- t- like scary, kind of like Gang Orc looked scary, and then they were like, no, cuddle me, I just want to make candy floss and <laughs> heal, and like heal injured children. I would love that. <laughs> and they were dressed in like bright pink and just the juxtaposition of it. <laughs> Something that looks really scary, but is like just a complete dandelion. So a nurse joy centipede. Yes. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> I'm going to write down nurse joy centipede, but I'm not going to like it. Oh, so should we go on to our next mashup? <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> okay, so, oh, James, you're going to like this one. Um, So for all My Hero Academia vigilantes, non-followers, myself included, we have come up to Christopher Skyline, a.k.a. Captain Celebrity. Yes. <laughs> so I don't know him, but his quirk allows him to fly. Is that right? Flight. Yes, and quirk. also it has, like, a bit of extension. I think like that a- when he's – he has, like, a – invulnerability field around him but when he flies carrying someone when he flies he loses it or there's some weird thing one let me check one second. um tactile telekinesis he utilizes the personal force field of telekinetic energy aerodynamic barrier surrounds him protects him from injury and extends to cover other people but gets thinner the more people he protects and he has super strength cool and flight so that's that confusing is a- but I guess That's it's a long flight. bloody list. I guess it's the the force field allows him to fly. Basically. Right. Oh, okay. it's kind of like if any of you guys have read Strong Female Protagonist. No. Because no, it's where it. she basically has that power, but she doesn't realize it for a while. Cool. Okay, oh. so our next character is Oh <gasps> Najiri. These two Wow, they that's work very compatible. So, yeah, that's super compatible. And also, I feel like their babies would look quite cute. But, um, <laughs> so her quake, her quirk is wave motion, and it's a weird one. It grants her the ability to convert her own vitality into energy and release it in the form of exceptionally powerful spiral shockwaves. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's super weird. She like, yeah, so spiral energy fields. Yeah. And a flying man. Um, that just feels like he could exert his telekinetic powers to like a higher degree, maybe. Or like yeah. he... Because he already kind of does that, right? But he does it, but it has to spiral around. So like you could fly, but it's only like in loop-de-loops. Maybe. Um, I want everything about the person created by the two of them to be spiral. I want them to have like spiral powered hair. I want their <laughs> eyes, their pupils to be spirals. I want like if it if it's I want them like their hair on their body to all be spirals. Like if someone's drawing their leg hair, I want it to all be like oh spirally. <laughs> uh, I think there's legit like a horror thing by Juji Ito that is like a, a spiral. Uzumaki. Yes, Uzumaki Ito. Sorry, I forgot his name. 
Or no, it's Junji Ito, but the book is Uzumaki. Oh, Uzumaki. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. But, okay, yes. Yeah, so their quirk will just be that. Scary spirals. Oh or, okay, let us let me try to think of... Um, or, actually, I would say mine is them only, like, the force field has to go in loop-de-loops. So maybe they, or they, and they could maybe extend it to other people or, like, shoot it out. So it's, like, kind of, like, hitting people with it. But it's, like, tougher. I don't know. James, what are your thoughts? I had the idea that if they combined both of them, like, that it could go, like, pierce through the body, like, um, like a sound wave instead. But Yeah. Mm, that would be cool. Her quirk is shockwaves, and his quirk is like a telekinesis power. Like I would feel like it would just go through their body and destroy them from the inside. Ooh. And they would do like a swirly blast. James, you've had very good ideas today. Mm. Okay, so our final contestant, well, for our, our <laughs> final contestants, <laughs> one of them is... <gasps> Tokoyami, the dark shadow. Yay! Yay! And he is with... Oh. Backdraft. That's a <laughs> letdown. <laughs> is that the guy who has, like, the weird firefighter head? Yeah. And even his arms are, like, fire hydrant hoses. And he's got, like, clown socks. <laughs> so his ability <laughs> is... His quirk is an unnamed water quirk. And it allows him to create water from hose spigots that he has in place of hands. And he can control that water and, like, shape it into barricades and things. I, I mean, how how do they, how are those compatible? <gasps> oh, no, I need to stop thinking about Pokemon. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of stands that he has, like, a firefighter stand. Like, you're nor... And he has, like, <laughs> that head, but he summons, like... A, a fu- just a fire hydrant appears. Just say a sentient water crow bird thing. Instead of dark shadow, it's just made out of water. Oh, like a water nymph. Mm-hmm. Yes. I said that like they're real things. Everyone knows. You know I just those, accepted you know it too. Like water nymphs. I just accepted it as oh yeah. Because they have water nymphs. It's a magical place. They're satires. Like all of this are true. Yep, so long as they stay away from those pesky woodland elves, the water nymphs are fine. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, a watery dark shadow. (gasps) Maybe it would change him, like, maybe it would change Tokiomi from being, like, a a dark raven bird to being, like, a beautiful kingfisher. Like, (gasps) water-based. He could be a flamingo. Okay. Uh, yeah, but they they spend a lot of time in water, don't they, with their one leg? Well, yeah. I was thinking of red. Uh, okay, flamingo toko. Yeah. <laughs> he just stands on one leg all the time, and they're like, <laughs> "What's this thing, guys? I don't know. I think he's asleep." <laughs> Instead of dark shadow, it's like flamboyant. I don't know, it's, friend. It goes- eat upside down too <laughs> so he'd eat and he'd be like <laughs> he like put his head between his legs oh my gosh <laughs> that's amazing oh, oh my god tokoyami do flamingo <laughs> oh, just wears sorry, all the time <sighs> <sighs> I got I mean, we got my firefighter man <laughs> Sorry, okay, I'm good. Oh, I'm just looking at background. He kind of looks like a goat. Like, he has, like, goat ears almost. But I think it's more like the flap of, like, fire retardant stuff. Yeah. But do you think, is he, I want to see his, like, normal look of, like, is that a helmet? I don't know if that's part of his body or not. Like, if it's part of his physical attributions. Yeah. Who knows? James, you have been the voice of reason throughout this game. Please give us a normal, well, it's not going to be normal, give us a suggestion. <laughs> I've already said my suggestion that um, they just end up having a water-based, like, water nymph. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's good. And my idea is a fire hydrant <laughs> that follows him around. <laughs> All our ideas are terrible. These are, like, the least <laughs> compatible quirks. <laughs> yeah. He has a fire hydrant head. 
<laughs> like Tokiyami, but with a fire hydrant head. Kind yeah. Of. I like it. <laughs> uh, or it's a, fi- yeah, it's a fire hydrant, and he actually summons Tokoyami, like, behind him. So it's the mm-hmm. opposite. I was really hoping that we were going to get another um, animal quirk, but then maybe <laughs> two animals mixing them together would have been a bit a bit much. Mm-hmm. Imagine Jozu Hononuke's quirk and Tokiyami mixed together. That would be terrifying. Imagine Tokiyami's beak, but with teeth. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. No, thank you. Because <laughs> uh, I guess, like, Mudman is kind of the result. Like, oh, that's what all, like, things are. Their, their quirks are a combination of their parents. But it's especially, he has, like, a skull face plus, like, everything sinking down. So I guess, like, it could be just that, that you look like a uh, backdraft. And then you have Dark Shadow as well. Or something. Oh, that would be even more unfortunate. Or, like, you turn the handles on your hands instead of water, like, Dark Shadow comes out. <laughs> My God. Oh. My quirks got worse. I have to summon you manually now. <laughs> and I just realized, like, you're fighting a fire, which is bright, so Dark Shadow would work less against it. I don't know if that makes any sense. Because it wouldn't really... I don't know. Whatever. Who cool. Makes sense? <laughs> right. And I think that's the end of the game. That's yes. the end of the show. So, you can find me, I'm just going to say my run out first, sorry, on Twitter at Chopper's Antlers. I have nothing else to promote. Kendra, where can we find you? You can follow me on Twitter at Sniper of My Heart, and I am on another podcast where uh, we talk about Haikyuu, which is over, but we might do a few more episodes. You can follow that on Twitter at Haikyuu Pod. Um, and I was also on uh, James' podcast recently, so James, tell us about your podcasts. Yes, uh, well, first you can follow me on Twitter at that one welder guy. I have the Kicking Stones podcast, a Dr. Stone read through manga podcast. And Kendra was on actually yesterday, <laughs> mm-hmm. two weeks in a row. But um, yeah. there's also the Weeb Jammin' podcast. We're going to cover Perfect Blue pretty soon, so look forward to that. And you can follow that at Jammin' Weeb on Twitter. Cool. And you can find the podcast at www.mha.com. Kendra has made some. Very good adaptions to the website. Thank you very much. You can email us at myheropod at gmail.com and we are on Twitter at MHA Pod. Ooh. Oh, and, and you can for the round out. Oh, before that, you can also leave us reviews on Apple Podcasts and we do have YouTube now, so leave us comments. I, w- I will reply to them and maybe we'll read them on the podcast if they're like, if you want us to. I don't know. But uh, what, what's a good round out? Um, Stay out of the fires and wear sunscreen. Go, Go beyond. beyond. Plus, Plus ultra. 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 And stay hydrated. Yes, wear a mask. This is my hero academia. This is manga news and Get him, yeah.